Okay guys, so after the chorus section we have verse 2, which is pretty much the same as verse 1. <laughs> This time on the ending part we have a load of diminished arpeggios. Now this is again something I've interpreted to sound something like the original track, so I'll play it, play it through for you. So what we've got going on now is starting on the 13th fret with our little finger and we're playing an F diminished arpeggio. So we're pulling off from 13 to 10 on the high E, going down to 12th fret on the B string, 13th fret of the G string and then pulling off to the 10th fret. So that one, slowly. And then we shift down to the next position which would be a B diminished arpeggio. Uh, so it's another symmetrical shape. Starting off on the B on the 12th fret, pulling off to the uh, 9th fret of the B string, hitting the 10th fret of the G string, then down to the D string, 12th fret, pulling off to the 9th fret. So that one goes like this. So that lick all together, the first part of that. And then essentially we take that same shape and shift it down a minor third. So now we're starting on the 10th fret of the high E string, doing the same uh, shape that was there. So now we're playing a D diminished arpeggio. So pulling off from D to B on the high E string, hitting an F sharp, uh, sorry, a G sharp on the uh, ninth fret of the B string, and then tenth fret of the G string, pulling off to the seventh fret. So we got, and then we have a G sharp uh, diminished arpeggio, starting G sharp on the eighth fret of the B string, pulling off to the F natural, down to a D, and then. So those two sound like this. So if I combine it with the first one that I just showed you. And then the very last one is a G diminished arpeggio. Starting on G on the 8th fret of the B string, pulling off to the 5th fret. Hitting the C sharp on the G string 6th fret. 8th fret uh, D string with the pinky and then pulling off to the G on the 5th fret of the D string. And then hammering on to the A leading us into the second chorus. So that entire section slowly sounds like this. And for the picking, um, it's all pretty much sweep picking on that. So I'm starting off with a down, pull off, up, up, pull off, down, pull off, up, up, pull off, and that is continued throughout the rest of it. Like that. And then we're into another chorus, so we've got the same line again. And then after that we have a mini solo section leading us up to what I think would be called the bridge. And um, this you can interpret it however you want, it's all pretty much um, based all around the A minor pentatonic, you can add some uh, Dorian modal flavours in there. But uh, a couple of licks that really stand out, one is a tapping lick, uh, which starts on the high E string, 5th fret, and we're hammering, it's doing a 3 note string pentatonic, and we're hammering on to the 8th, 10th fret and we're tapping the 12th fret uh, of the high E string with our middle finger on our right hand so the first part goes like this and then we take that same shape down to the B string and we add a little slide from B to C and back down to B and then pulling off the exact same shape that was on the E string so we got like that so slowly And that last part is just a straight up kind of bluesy rock lick. And then we're on to some more arpeggios, which is on 
uh, just a two string arpeggio using starting off on an A minor, so we've got A on the 10th fret of the B string, the minor 3rd C on the 8th fret, and then the 5th on the 12th fret of the high E, and we go. So we're picking, pick, hammer on, and we're combining that with the wire pedal, so. And then we go down to an A diminished, so we take that 5th uh, and flatten it. Then we go down to a G major arpeggio. So for fret numbers, that's 8 on the B string, 7 on the high E, 10th on the high E. And then a D7 arpeggio, top part of it. And uh, again, the fret numbers for that are 7 on the B string, 5 on the high E, and then 8 on the E as well. So all that together, slowly. And then we've got another load of licks, which again you can make up your own. And then uh, goes back to the main riff once again. But instead of doing the power chords, we do this massive uh, run up, which I'll show you now. Okay, so um, for those of you who had seen my Shred the Gnar video, I went up and through this lick before, but for those of you who haven't, I'll teach it to you now. So it's all three note per string um, alternate picking lick, and uh, it's taking what would be called, say, the G uh, Ionian shape. Like that, but we're doubling it up on each string, so we're going... The only time it changes is when we go to the higher string, so I'll just call out the fret numbers for you. So we've got three, five, seven on the A uh, on the E and A string. And then four, five, seven on the D and G. And then on the B string and the high E string, uh, we just ascend it one step at a time as opposed to doubling up like we were doing before. So fret numbers on the B and E string, we got five, seven, eight. And then 7, 8, 10. And then 8, 10, 12. And then 10, 12, 13. And then on the high E, 10, 12, 14. And then the last one, uh, 12, 13, 15, 12, 14, 15. And then bending up to the root note again. So that slowly sounds like this. And um, in my version of the video, I just carried on soloing using some different arpeggios and just shifting between the various uh, minor pentatonic shapes, adding in some different modal things and combining some different techniques with legato. So again, that's free for your interpretation. Okay, and the very last bit is the melody once again, and we are up on the B string this time. Starting on the A note on the 10th fret, hammering onto the B, pulling off to the open B string. Going down to G down to F sharp, slide down to E, and then do this hammer on pull off uh, scale run up like this. So the fret numbers are 5 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 10, 10 to 12, 12 to 13, 13 to 15, and then back down. Hit the root again, fifth, minor third. So that part. So we're going root, fifth, pulling off to the, uh, the fourth, sliding down to the nine, down to the flat seven. Um, Minor 7 hammering onto the root, sliding down to the major 6, and then doing this double stop bend, 7th fret on the B string and 8th fret on the high E, and just bend that up quarter note, and then just finish off with the main riff.
Mars Pot sounds like this. Okay, so there you go guys, that's how my interpretation of Manic by Justin Derrico. Hope you enjoyed these lessons.